Hello, my name is Paul Priestley. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Paul Priestley Art, where you'll find lots of interesting videos to have you drawing like an expert. Yes, now today we're going to be looking at drawing with one pencil. Yes, just one pencil. And we're going to be drawing lots and lots of line, but no outlines. We're going to suggest them. That is going to be brilliant. So let's make a start. Come on. Right, you need a pencil. Right, I'm using a 2B pencil and you must make sure it is really, really sharp. Okay, so you've got a good pencil. Now, it doesn't matter which pencil you use, so don't make any excuses. If you've just got an HB pencil, then that's fine. Softer pencil's better, but HB will be fine. Now, we're going to try, just going to draw very, very lightly here and press on harder and harder and harder until we get a really dark tone. Now, obviously, if you're using a softer pencil, you get a darker tone, but you will get a variation of tone, even with an HB pencil. So you can do everything I'm going to do today. OK, we're going to start by just drawing a few vertical lines. Now, I'm actually going to draw the inside of a cylinder and I'm just using vertical lines, which are going to gradually get closer together and slightly darker. You see, as I've done there. Now, watch what happens next. I'm now going to draw some vertical lines, but I'm leaving a gap. Do you see there? The dark area, darker lines gradually getting lighter and lighter as they come around, which suggests this being rounded. You'll notice now that that top edge, because I've left a gap, suggests an edge or an outline. There's no actual line there. It's suggested. And that always makes things look so much more convincing. Now, drawing this section here, similar sort of idea. Notice how the angle of those lines vary as I'm going around this strange shape. And you'll notice again, I've suggested an edge. Not drawn an outline, I have suggested an edge. And I'm doing the same here. You can see... The lines are getting lighter and lighter as they come around to give that suggestion of tone and difference. Notice here, I'm putting some more vertical lines on and pressing on harder on the left-hand side, and it creates that roundness to the object. So you can see how you can suggest three dimensions just by varying the tone. Now, we'll wonder how long it will take you to work out what this is that I'm drawing. You'll notice again that the angle of the lines is really important in this drawing. Notice what's happening to those lines. Now, again, I'm going to draw a whole series of the lines now underneath. Notice that there are a slight angle to the ones above. So you're suggesting a curve there. Do you see the idea? You've got that sort of curved shape going to do the same along here. Notice no outline. Now this is a crucial bit. Hopefully this will give you the clues to what it is. Notice these lines now are coming out at an angle and are curving. You get the idea? Twisted leaf. You see? Very clever. And we've just suggested it just by using line. That's all we've done. Add in a few other lines now. This is called cross hatching, where we're going across the item and it creating a little bit more depth and tone. You see? So we gradually build this up now by just simply putting layer upon layer of cross hatching. Now, if you haven't got a very dark pencil, just by putting layer upon layer will darken the tone. So you can build up the layers just by using line. It's a very sort of clever thing to do. Now, if you look at the drawings of Vincent van Gogh, for example, you'll find, particularly in his pen drawings, he uses line all the time. Line is very suggestive. And if you get the angles of the line correct, it tells you something about the structure of the object. Notice here now I'm putting a little bit of darker tones in. But notice the edge is that leaf, you see? The edge is suggestive. There's no outline there. Yet you fill in the outline because it's suggested. And when you do that, it makes the drawing look so much more convincing. You imagine drawing this with a big, thick, heavy outline all the way around all those bits. It wouldn't look convincing at all. So... We'll just finish this one off by putting a few more little darker tones on, you see. 
lying again, suggesting the shape and the curve of this leaf and the shadow underneath the leaf. You see how it works. Now, imagine you were doing something like drawing the horn of a cow or a long tube or something like that. Notice what I'm doing. I'm just doing curves round and round and round with my fingers. Do you see there? And they're just getting larger and larger as I come towards me. And you'll notice how it makes the horn or the tube or whatever look as though it's going into the distance. It looks as though it's going further away. You see? And all I've done is by drawing that curve going backwards and forwards with my pencil. Now I am just going to add some shadow to that and I do that simply by adding a half curve. You see? Just coming down the side of that cylinder there and it makes it look three-dimensional. And it's very, very simple. You see? It's not a difficult thing to do. It's just a matter of practice. Now, imagine you were drawing a donut. Yes, a donut. We're just drawing lots of half circles. Look, do you see? Just going round and round and round till we get to the bottom and it becomes almost vertical and then begins to curve the opposite direction. You see? And that way then you'll get this donut shape. Okay? As we come up here, you see very curved and then gradually straighter and straighter until it becomes vertical. Now, we do the same as we did with the tube. We're adding a few more lines round this edge here. You see how it's making this donut look three-dimensional? Okay, this donut shape. Okay, there we do the same thing there and horizontally in the middle, just going backwards and forwards, makes that section look flat. So you can see how you've suggested the whole of this three-dimensional object. Now, imagine this three-dimensional object is not a donut, but is maybe the centre of a flower. Um, what I'm going to do now is just draw some vertical lines almost like petals. Now you'll notice that petal has got a shape to it. But there's no outline around it. It's just built up lots and lots of single lines. And it looks quite convincing. It looks quite interesting. You see? You see what I'm doing here? By varying the line, twisting the line, you can make the petal look as though it's twisted and shaped. I'm not going to go around the whole flower. We're just going to do a few on this side. But you see, this is the basis of it. I've just drawn those very, very simply as you can see. Now, going over with the cross hatching can now suggest that these shapes have maybe got a slight twist to them or got some shadow on them. You see the petals here? So I'm just adding a little bit of cross hatching, building it up layer by layer, just using line all the time. And it can look really convincing. As I say, have a look at Van Gogh's pen and ink drawings um, and his pencil drawings and he follows this idea of using line although he's obviously a little bit more talented than I am well a lot more talented actually but there we go still not to worry look at this now you see we are beginning to suggest petals which are behind the ones in front so they're going to be much darker so we're using much stronger tone by pressing on with the pencil much more you see the idea? Now this obviously isn't a real flower. You'd be better drawing a real flower from observation. All we're doing here is looking at the method that you might use if you were drawing a similar sort of flower, like a sunflower or, a, or an oxide daisy or something of that sort. You see the idea? So we're making the petals behind the front petals darker because they would be in shadow. And you can see here how those lines are twisting and it gives character to the petal. Now, we're just going to spend a, a few moments now just adding some light and shade. Notice how that little bit of shade I've just done there with line creates that edge between that and the petal below. You see, there's no outline there. It's all suggested. And that is what makes the drawing look so convincing and so interesting to look at. We'll just add a little bit more tone now to get these tonal values correct. Um, so we'll just add a little bit more on some of these petals, develop them a little bit more. You can see as I'm beginning to do here, and it's all been done with line. There's no shading, it's all line. And this will make the drawing, as I say, look nice and convincing. You see how it's beginning to develop. 
Now, you can keep working on this. You could draw a whole flower, but you, if you are, draw it from observation because that's going to look so much more convincing. What we're looking at here is principally the method of doing it as opposed to drawing a real flower. Right, we'll just add a few final touches to this. You see here, just blend in those few little marks there just to make it look as convincing as possible. You could work on further with this and develop it as you wish. But as I say, draw it from a real flower as opposed. But notice the edges. That's what we're looking for. Now, I'm just going to finally draw a little pencil. You'll notice here no outlines. We're going to draw the tip, then the wooden part of the pencil. I'm just drawing it very, very lightly to start with. But I am leaving that gap to suggest the change between the wood and the tip of the pencil. I'm just developing this by going over it with slightly darker tones. And then again, leave the gap to do the body of the pencil. Just drawing the lines horizontally across very, very lightly to start with. Notice how you've suggested that difference between the body and the sharpened part of the pencil. It makes it look so much more convincing when you don't draw an outline around that. Right? Just adding the shading here. Uh, Coming up to the top there, we'll uh, just go over the tip of the pencil, leave a little bit there for a highlight. You see, and I've now got a convincing pencil drawing. I hope you've drawn a really good drawing too. Good luck with your work. Thank you for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed the video and learnt something about drawing without outlines. Wonderful. If you have, then please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the little black bell as well, then you can get notifications of when I make new videos. If you want to support the making of these videos, and that would be much appreciated, then please check out my Patreon channel, where you'll find lots of interesting rewards in return for your patronage. That would be wonderful. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!